Schultz and welcome Bell. Thank you so much for having me. It is so wonderful to have you here and for us to both be here together in the space. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who may not know, um, Belle is, uh, the, she owns Cosmic Light Wellness yes. and she specializes mm -hmm. in consulting for health from an Ayurvedic perspective. And functional nutrition. And functional nutrition. Um, and you have a, a sp specific specialty in, um, in supporting people who are trying to conceive. Yes, and, and perinatal health. Perinatal all inclusive. The window. <laughs> the window. Yes, I love that. And Belle teaches in yoga here at Badlands Yoga. Um, <clears throat> and so we thought we'd talk a little bit about yin yoga, home yoga practice, and fascia. <laughs> I love that. So, so tell me, it, you're currently interested in fascia because you, like me, are healing uh, yes. an injury or, or an imbalance. Yes. Yeah. How has, has your understanding of fascia and yin yoga helped you in that? I think it's supported my body in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. um, and I have also sought out physical therapy as well. So I'm sort of working it from all angles, but for my own practice, um, it is definitely retraining the fascia and um, assisting it in a lot of ways and a lot of healthy ways, mm -hmm. um, which are only go doing good things. So. Mm -hmm. I think the physical therapy is just like another assist and another sort of piece of the picture in helping the fascia to do what it needs to do and be in the proper, you know, firing and the proper alignment, or I don't even know if alignment is the right word, but the proper way that it should function and move when we move. Yes. Yes. So what's your understanding of the relationship between yin yoga and fascia? So yin yoga is it's sort of like the vehicle where we can address the fascia on a deeper level. So we have the tissues. I mean, fascia is attached to not only our muscles and our everything within the muscles, it's also attached to like our bones. And so it's, it's that interconnective pathway of tissue that holds the blood vessels and everything else. And it's, um, it's just, it's always being informed by the way that we move. I love that you used the, the word informed yes. because um, they have found nerve pathways that are, they're not the, the large nerve pathways that are fairly um, not standard, but um, predictable right. through like a human limb, but also the, the smaller local nerve pathways and they run along the back. That's what I'm dealing with right now. Is it really? In my leg, yes. Yeah. And it's it's quite bizarre because I'm like, I do a lot of stretching. I do a lot of, you know, things to support my body, yet I still have pain. And so that's where the, the PT is sort of coming in to mm -hmm. address the other side of that because I feel like I, I'm doing a lot of good things mm -hmm. and it just needs a little extra attention. Well, and I don't know about you, I... I think it's I think it's incredibly wise to get an outside pair of eyes. I think so too. <laughs> because so what we're talking about is there's this network of fibers, right? And it's um, so there's uh, Jean Barteau is a, a doctor in France mm -hmm. who's doing some really cool research and showing that fibers are only one way that fascia can exist. It can exist in a gel-like state. So it's mm. almost indeterminate uh, until forces are created right. that pull it into a, a sort of more, more solid uh, formation. And in this gel, there are fibers that then can align to be supportive or it, when the gel is liquid enough, they can align. If they can't align, then the fascia can't do its job. Right. But it's very much like consciousness, right? It's so this so. Uh, un lo unlocalized network throughout the body, and it informs and is informed. 
it's this constant iterative process and it carries our habits it does it's, it's wild it's like even such a, a simple thing like walking right I had a session yesterday and after my PT session he said okay well I want you to walk so I did my walk and I came back did something again walked again we did it three times he said well the first time your foot was turned out and I'm usually very aware mm -hmm. of how my body is moving and I had no idea yeah. he said the second time my foot was a little bit more square and the third time it was straight ahead so it's just incredible how these little micro movements can do so much in a simple thing like walking. It, that we do every day. That you do every day. <laughs> and I think that's one of the things about yoga. We, we feel like we know. We know how to move. We know how to, you know, loosen up shoulders. Right. We live in a body, so we feel like we know how to live in a body. I'm a body owner. I've been a body <laughs> owner for a long time. <laughs> You'd think you would know, right? And it really helps not only from your own attention. I feel like our own attention is the field in which the healing can occur. Absolutely. And it's not that it can't occur without us paying attention, but holy, it, it skyrockets the healing potential when we're able to be really present in the field, but then the, the good of having another person also bathe us in their attention, even if it's incredibly focused, right? Right. Is, um, it's an incredible catalyst. Yes. And even Iyengar is one of, not that he's a big yin yogi that I know. Or no, was, I don't think so. I, maybe he is on the other side. Right. I don't know. <laughs> But the quote from him that I never get completely right is something like yoga teaches us to heal, to cure what can be cured and to endure. Mm -hmm. And I, I, the word endure, I feel like it helps us to inhabit our bodies as they are with all of their glorious imperfections. <laughs> totally. <laughs> right. And it's like, when you feel something that's insecure in your body, you want to like immediately fix it, or you want to just have it go back to the way it was even if 20 years ago, right? And your 20 year old body or your 10 year old body or whatever. Um, and it doesn't work that way. Like we <laughs> have to just keep moving forward. And yes, endure is sort of the word. It's like, you just, you take on what is currently happening in your present body. And you just work with it. You can't go back right. and you can only be present, right? Even if we're thinking forward, we still have to stay present with what we are doing right now for ourselves. How does your yin yoga practice help you do that? So my yin yoga practice, it not only helps this, but it helps this. This <laughs> anchoring the mind into... The, the holds, which are often really hard. They, they can be hard for some people to hold um, a pose for an extended period of time. And in yin, we usually hold for a minimum, of, I would say, of three minutes. Um, the average is three to six minutes. Um, for me, it helps my mind to stay focused. And so if I'm feeling something that's off, I pull back. If I can feel my breath, um, allow my body to give in a little bit more than I give in. And it's just this sort of constant play of breath and anchoring the breath and the mind together. Ooh, yes. Play with the breath and anchoring the breath and the mind together. Yes. Well, and <laughs> I think that our, the field of our attention is so, it's difficult to talk about, right? <laughs> because it's bigger than words. It is. Uh, but words are the way that we can talk about it together. And explain it, yeah. Yeah. And our breath is a manifestation of that, but being with that awareness changes the breath right. and the mind that writes it. Absolutely. Um, and it can be tricky. Sometimes the mind really doesn't want to 
right? <laughs> and it's trying to fight you or, or you're not even fight you, but just alert you to say, I'm not feeling this. And it's okay to come out earlier. Like there's nobody, there's no drill sergeant above you demanding that you stay in the post for six minutes. I mean, that's just not what it is. But if you can, you will get a lot of benefit. Well, and I, I think that this is so important too, because in yin, we intentionally put the body in these places of potential intensity, right? right? Maybe not the very first pose of class, right. but uh, <clears throat> you want at some point during a yin class to feel something that's on a spectrum of intensity, right. maybe discomfort. And so then it's a matter of, okay, the, there are an infinite number of places between feeling nothing and feeling that discomfort, right? Yes. So <laughs> while stillness is one of the top of the end practice, right. there's also this freedom, right? It, there's, there's no yin drill sergeant. No. <laughs> um, there's a freedom to, okay, what happens if you back off the edge a little bit? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're always trying to find the edge, like the, I call it the magic edge because Ooh, I love that. I'm there's use that. Yeah. You should. <laughs> the magic edge is like that beautiful spot where you almost feel like you're floating and your, your mind is at ease. There's no tension. If there is tension in the body, it's okay. Like it, it is that magic edge and it's fine to, writing it and finding it and just letting it be and not pushing because I've seen people push themselves and crank their foot into a pigeon and it's like well you might be doing more damage that way right we don't want to crank we don't want to force the body will open when it's ready and that's partly what yin teaches us or has taught me especially yes and it sounds like that's a big part of how you teach it absolutely Yes. It's a process of befriending the body. Oh my gosh. Very well said. Very well said. Because we are our friend, our body's best friend. We have to be. Yeah. When you're a body owner, you have to be (laughs) friends with yourself. We have to love ourselves. It's our self-love piece of that picture. And the way that, so I, I promise this comes back around. Uh, we had date night at our house last night nice. and usually it's dinner and a movie at home. It's yeah. still dinner and a movie, but we were at the final stage of, uh, putting up a whole bunch of books and bookshelves. And so date night was working on this bookshelf, project, right? <laughs> yeah. And what I, that's a metaphor for me for sometimes love isn't roses and chocolates. It's a little work. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's let's let's do this thing together. That's going to be beautiful. And we're going to love. Yeah. Right. And we're just going to enjoy being together. And that's to me what yin yoga is. Totally. It's like, Hey body, seems like you've been caring a lot lately. How about we just hang out together in quiet? I love that. (laughs) In quiet. Yeah. And stillness. Yeah. And come back to the stillness. So, yeah. And this idea that just by being together, we change them. Yes. There's these even micro shifts that can occur Mm -hmm. when you're with body or best friend or partner or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's really, but that's, that's the most important thing that we can do for ourselves, our bodies. It's beautiful. (laughs) Is a, is a way to do that. It's a good vehicle. Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, so we're, we're coming in on the end of our time. Um, I know that you have, you enter classes, with sort of a general idea of what you're going to do, and then you adapt it. Do you have an idea of what you're going to be doing this week? This week, I like spine stuff personally. So lots of twisty things and lengthening things and spines and spine and hips things. <laughs> spines and hips things. Yes. And, and in my experience in taking your class, um, there's a place for everybody too. Yes. And it really does address most bodies, I would say. Well, and as I think that that's also, maybe this is a good place to end. Yin sure. is incredibly accessible. Very much. Yes. Um, there's a place for everyone. 
I would agree. Well, I'm honored that you're teaching here mm -hmm. and I'm so glad uh, to, that we've had this time to talk about yoga together. Um, and I'm so excited for people to meet you and get to know you. I hope you do this. Thank you. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you, Belle, and happy yoga.